We've got 100 acres of soybeans left to spray. Hopefully we're going to get that today, but it's a little bit windy this morning. We've also got several loads of corn to go down to both the ethanol plant, which is down there, you can tell because I'm pointing that way, and the local co-op. In this, well, this is as you can see, obviously, the newer bin, the GSI bin, the far south bin. And this corn is all from 2019, so this is a little bit lighter, dirtier corn. We're blending it off with last year's really good corn to make sure we meet grade. The sweep is hung up in here. There we go. If you haven't seen these power sweeps work before, they just essentially pull all the corn right to the center into the sump and there we go. You can see this stuff is hung up in here a little bit. It's been in here about a year and a half underneath a lot of other corn. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's just been here a while and it's a little bit dirtier, a little poorer quality because if you watched my videos in 19 you saw we had to harvest this stuff pretty wet so it was like 30 percent corn. We had to run it through the dryer pretty heavily and, and it just wasn't as good a corn. That's not uncommon for up here. We're just blending it off to, I don't know, 20% this and 80% and good corn in the, in the trucks. And we're getting right down there. We're almost done hauling out all of our corn. Our bins are getting awfully close to empty right now. Should be good now. We're letting that run into a different bin because it's easier to blend out of that one. Just trust me, believe me. Just shut it off. I think so. Okay. Let's we'll check before we start it. Make sure it's covered up with corn. Right. You want me to load a truck for Nate, or keep mowing and spray Roundup on all the weeds back here? Yeah, both. Okay. Some days a lawnmower is your best mode of transportation around the yard. You know. Gotta check tire pressures. Some days this is your quickest gauge. Tires are all good and the battery had enough juice in it to start. What a day. Are you guys cleaning up your own messes? Yeah. Yeah? Boomers. Always on their phones. If you don't kill the weeds around here early and often, they take off. And then they, they're just a mess. They're ugly. And they give the guy with bad allergies over there loading a the truck a lot of fits. So we try to keep him dead. It just keeps getting gloomier out. It was supposed to be sunny today. Well, that appears to be transferring just fine. We've got two trucks with two nates on the road right now, bringing corn out. We've got corn transferring. It's a little bit breezy yet once I get around these bins and a little gloomy. So I think we're going to wait until after lunch to go finish spraying that last 100 acres. So there's really only one good thing left for me to work on here. We got one truck about half loaded, another one that's waiting in line here, but this conveyor we had installed a couple years ago, it didn't get built right. And the weak point, the slow point, is the conveyor instead of the unload coming out of the bin. Apparently we had the unload open a little too much. And what happens is this conveyor can't take it away fast enough, it comes out of here too quickly, bulges out of here, dumps corn on the ground, smokes the belts off inside there. All good things, right? I've got it closed. The sump has closed the conveyors on. That's weird. That is not supposed to be running right now. 
It's still going. Maybe it's just freewheeling. Well, the belts are gone for sure, so we'll have to pull this cover off, see what's going on underneath there. That's why we don't run a lot of covers around here, because you pull them off all the time. Those it must, might be junk. must have quit just as we got... 57s? Yeah. Yeah, these ones are a little crispy. Should be something we can make work anyway. Those are 54s, what are these? 58. We got plenty of room left on the adjuster, so 58s should work. Okay. Lovely. Not sure. How close are we? You send an 8 to the chip or a C back again? Benson, yeah. That'll be alright. Turn it on, try it? Yeah. I did that. It should be empty. Now I gotta run, gotta go pick up some uh, really important parts to get us through the rest of the day here. Lunch. That's the important thing, lunch. Hey, look at that. It's 10 millimeter. Hello. The wind is down enough now. I'm gonna load the sprayer head out get those last few acres done just so that well so that it's done because it needs to be done that's why seven point four gallons of clethodim about twenty one gallons of roundup I go for the clutch with my foot every time in this, even though it's hydrostatic. Anybody else out there do the same exact thing? Like every time I reach for the key, I stomp the floor, there's no pedal. Oddly enough, I never do that in the combine. That's also hydrostatic. I don't know what the difference is. Onyx needs the bucket on the skid steer here so that he can shovel some of the chaff up that's laying on the ground around the bins from last fall yet. Air conditioning. All right. Busy day. That's a good thing. Now I just did a little bit of math here and according to my math, which is correct, I put 1,035 gallons in this tank. 1,035 gallons in here. 44 gallons of it is chemical. That's around four and a half percent of what's coming out of the booms there that's actually chemical. The rest of what you see coming out of there is all water. 96, 95 and a half percent of that is water. This tank full is gonna handle 80 acres. So everything you see here of this bean field to the east of me here, that's what's going to be sprayed out of this tank full. 80 acres on 1,035 gallons, so I'm spraying 12 and a half gallons to the acre. Right around a half gallon per acre. So a half gallon for each roughly football field is what consists of chemical. The rest of it is all water. Just a fun fact worth noting. Keep that in mind next time you see the sprayers out in the field.
got some trees up on the end of the field here next to the highway. It makes for a, an extremely tight turning situation. This half, this east half of this field didn't get a pre-emerge spray down on it. Um, I don't remember exactly why, but you can tell right to the row where east of me and right where I'm at here, we didn't get a pre-emerge down, meaning we didn't have any residual, any chemical residual down on the soil um, right after we planted. It is much cleaner on that side of the field. I mean, it's, it's crazy how big a difference that stuff really makes, even in years where you think it doesn't work all that well. This is one of the dirtiest pieces we have just over here, but, uh, but this stuff's gonna take care of it. But it's interesting to see how big of a difference that pre-emerge herbicide really does make. Well, I mean, that, that pretty well does it. That's it. Ooh, look at that snazzy red Kenworth. How are things going over here? Pretty good, I got the sweep running again. Okay. So, Nate's not back with the other truck yet, so I figured to start sweeping on that for a while. Sure. Well, while that sweep runs and transfers a little more corn, I may as well do some more important stuff. I suppose I better load a couple trucks for morning. I think we got plenty of corn transferred now, so we'll shut this down. You gotta remember how to do that. Well, that's two more trucks loaded for morning. We'll do some more of the same tomorrow, minus the spring. Maybe do some cleanup around here. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're somewhere where you find yourself near a row crop, keep it between the rows. <laughs>